prophet. Jeremiah lived seven, eight hundred years before this time. Jeremiah said, let me tell you about a time in the future where God said, I will consume them and there'll be no figs on the fig tree. Hmm. Get a hold of this now, church. Get a hold of this in your mind. Don't allow yourself to drift off right now like you typically do. Hold on to this. Hold on to this. You got a prophet talking about a fig tree being cursed 700, 800 years later, and Christ walks in and says, let me fulfill that scripture right there. Okay. No fruit on you hereafter. Go ahead, Art. Here's another example. Hosea. I, God, found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first stripe in the fig tree. Over and over again, the scripture uses fig tree as a representation of Israel. So let's ask ourselves this morning, leaves, figs, what is going on here? What do these represent? I mean, come on, this can't be about leaves and figs. Mark didn't take the time to record this about this. There's got to be more here. Let's talk about it. Leaves, leaves. Leaves represent the outward trappings of looking like you are religious. You know, church members. People that go to Sunday school. John, people that carry Bibles. People that know scripture verses. People that are in the temple. You know, us. Us. These are not people, this is not Muslims, this is not Buddhists, these are not atheists. These are people that look religious, John. They know amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, but they've yet to be saved. These are people who have walked through those baptismal waters. These are people that have been to Anchorage. These are counselors on staff. These are preachers in pulpits. These are priests in garb. All the trappings of being religious. Whereas the fig itself represents the actual fruit or evidence that this is a fig tree. True and a genuine, authentic conversion. 